Hello, and welcome to Archvelder's Hacks with Archvelder and his amazing hacks. This video will be a complete guide to the fastest method of raw gold farming. This route has never been published before anywhere and is the fastest way of accumulating raw gold without using third party hacks or exploits. Now, it is well known the bosses of legacy raids often award very good raw gold and are easy to kill but they are also often very far apart within an instance, or they have awkward immunity or other mechanics, or an excessive amount of roleplay, all of which tend to dramatically reduce the profits expressed in terms of gold per hour from farming them. In this video, I'll present a method to bypass these problems by exploiting the LFR raid system and farm only the most efficient and accessible bosses for raw gold. To start with, you will need to port to your garrison using your garrison hearthstone. You will need at least a level 2 garrison. Near to the entrance of your main building will be Seer Kazal. The purpose of this mysterious orc is to allow players to access old looking for raid instances from Warlords of Drain. And we're going to select the option Grant me a vision of Archimon's fall at the Black Gate. This is the last boss from Warlords of Draenor, and weirdly is by far the fastest and most efficient to run. It takes only 10 to 15 seconds to reach Archimond, and you can ignore the trash, and another 10 to 15 seconds to kill him. Archimond drops around 250 to 400 raw gold and Venter items. Once you've killed Archimond, click on Leave Instance Group. You can access that option by right-clicking on your portrait on the top left. Having returned to your garrison and Seer Gazelle, now select the option Grant me a vision of the Destructor's Rise. As with the Archimon fight, Fell Lord Zakun here, the penultimate encounter of Hellfire Citadel, is in very close proximity to the port location. The only problem is that there is 30 seconds of role play before the fight can begin, so this one is slightly slower. Zakun drops between 150 to 250 gold. It's worth pointing out that in all raid boss fights, your cooldowns are reset automatically at the conclusion of every encounter, so you can always use, for example, Time Warp to speed up the fight. By the way, I'm using a character with a deliberately low eye level that just dinged, so that these numbers aren't overinflated. Almost certainly, if you've been keeping pace with current content in Battle for Azeroth, you will be able to down these bosses much faster than I do in this video. Having killed Zakun, return to the garrison and select Kazal's option Grant me a vision of the Hellfire Citadel's Bastion of Shadows. The boss you'll be killing here is called Shadow Lord Iskar and is very close to the teleport point, but unfortunately has a weird mechanic that renders him invulnerable for short periods, so this isn't quite as quick as the first two bosses we've killed. What we're trying to do here is kill a boss in ideally one minute or less. Uh, but we'll accept 1 minute 30 seconds. When a fight takes longer than 2 minutes to get started and completed, then it begins to become less attractive than other non-instance based gold making opportunities in the game. Now we're going to run to the next boss in the instance. I'm going to speed up the footage here as you can see. Takes about a minute. You may wonder why we're running to another boss when there are other bosses in this video that can be accessed much faster. The reasons are quite complicated, they're to do with the way instance lockout works. Essentially what we're doing is maximizing the bosses we kill per instance without violating our maximum two minute kill time constraint. Now there's something worth mentioning here, this boss can't be directly looted like a lot of the legacy raid bosses. There's a chest which spawns in the north corner of the room that you can see there. You don't actually have to go over to it and loot it. If you just ignore it, then the items will be sent directly to your mailbox. 
and you can pick them up later. That just saves you a bit of time. In fact, this is true even with bosses that can be directly looted. The penultimate option we'll be selecting is Grant me a vision of the Hellfire Citadel's Halls of Blood. Now, this one seems like a long trek to the bosses, but actually it takes just over 20 seconds to get to the point where you can start the encounter. And while there are three mobs to kill, none of them have any immunity mechanics, which slow things down, as with some of the other bosses. Now, this is the last encounter we'll be doing in Hellfire Citadel. By the way, this guide assumes that you want to farm for a reasonable length of time. If you want to farm gold for a very short period, you can just restrict yourself to the first boss in each of the raids I mentioned. And only kill those bosses which can be killed in under a minute. We're now going to return to Sir Kazal for the very last time and select the option to go to the Blackrock Foundry's Iron Assembly. And there's a tiny amount of running to do here. Try very hard not to aggro anything on the way to the boss Beast Lord Darmac, as some of the trash mobs have nasty stuns. It takes about 40 seconds to get to Darmac, but he's one of the easiest bosses to kill in this whole video. So overall it only takes about a minute. At this stage we are done with Sir Kazal and Warlords of Draenor, and we are going to go to the Vale of Eternal Blossoms in Pandaria. If you have a mage or access to a mage, you can port directly here, otherwise the relevant portal in your faction capital port room will take you to the Jade Forest. You can then fly west to the Vale. Once there, go to the Seat of Knowledge above Mogoshan Palace and talk to Lawwalker Han. Click on the option Dread Approach to the Heart of Fear. Now we're going to do a complete run of all three bosses. Heart of Fear is one of the best trash farming instances in the game, if not the best. The trash in the first chamber alone drops over a hundred gold, if you include the vendor greens and the lock boxes, which we'll come to in a moment. In fact, when I'm very short of time, I will often just run the first chamber till I hit instance lockout. Completing the three bosses will take you between four and eight minutes. So, less time than it takes to watch a Vaulty video. And in fact, only slightly less time than it takes to make a Vaulty video. Mists of Pandaria bosses drop much the same value in raw gold and vendor items that you get with Warlords of Draenor bosses. The main difference is that the distribution is skewed by certain high value tokens and weapons. At this stage, your bags are probably getting full, so it is a good idea to clear them out. There's two add-ons I use for this purpose specifically. The first is called Crap Away, and that just removes all the trash items from your bags. The second is called Auto Seller, and that removes all the greens automatically, which is fantastic for the Mr. Pandaria raids. You can input more valuable items manually, and train it so it knows what to and what not to sell. Also, you'll get a lot of lockboxes dropping from Mr. Pandaria raids. These can be opened by any level 85 or higher rogue. If you don't have a level appropriate rogue, you can make a class trial rogue. Now we're going to run the second half of the Heart of Fear raid instance. So select the option The Nightmare of Shekzir and kill all three bosses. Note the gauntlet tokens that drop here. These are worth rather more than anything they can be turned into, so vendor them as they are. This significantly increases the average gold returns from each boss. It takes about three minutes to kill the other two bosses after the first, so this raid isn't the most efficient, but it is worth completing if you want to avoid hitting instance lockout too early. Unlike the first wing of LFR for Heart of Fear, this wing has no notable trash drops. Now, once you're finished with the Heart of Fear, return to the Seat of Knowledge and select the option for the Terrace of Endless Spring from Lawmaster Han. There's actually quite a bit of roleplay here and a few weird mechanics, but because the bosses are so close together, 
the effective area of the raid is quite small. It's linear, fast and efficient enough to make it well worthwhile completing. Next we're going to run Mogushan Vaults. So select the option Guardians of Mogushan. Now the Stone Lion Trash uh, before the first bosses is actually a pretty good farm in itself. We're going to be killing three bosses here. The fourth boss is notoriously buggy and has lots of roleplay. This guide is highly optimized for raw gold, but it is worth mentioning that if you aren't that focused on raw gold, you can just farm the trash in the first chamber in Mogoshan vaults repeatedly for motes of harmony and blues. If you want to try that, I'd suggest actually going to the heroic raid instance in Kunlai Summit. I still do that occasionally, it's one of my favourite farms. Now, I'd terminate this run at Garajal the Spirit Binder. If you're an experienced player and you know how to deal with the glitch at the Spirit Kings, you may want to complete this raid. However, I wanted to make this guide as simple as possible. The next raid in this sequence is the quickest in the whole route. Select the option, tell me of the forgotten depths below the throne of thunder. And then you will be transported to this magical and beautiful gigantic turtle, which we're going to kill. Now at this point we've joined 10 raids and hit instance cap, so you'd think that would be it for the rest of the hour. But in fact, Instance Lockout doesn't apply if you keep joining new instances. We'd like to do something really fast like the first boss at the last stand of the Zandalari, but that belongs to the same Throne of Thunder instance where we've just killed the turtle boss Tortoise, so that won't work. However, if we select the Underhold option from Lawalka Han, that takes us into the Siege of Orgrimmar, which is a raid instance we haven't been in yet. And so that effectively bypasses instance lockout. Siege of Orgrimmar is generally speaking too large to run efficiently, but there's one boss, Malkarok, that can be reached and killed from the LFR port point in just over 1 minute and 30 seconds. Now, you probably haven't been doing this for an hour if you've been doing it continuously without breaks. So, to use up the remainder of the hour, use your garrison hearthstone again to take you back to your garrison in Draenor, and then head north to Gorgrond to the Iron Docks. Now, I'd strongly advise at some stage setting up an Ogre Waygate to Gorgrond so you can travel there instantly. That will save you the flight time. If you don't know how to set up a waygate, I'd strongly suggest you watch my video entitled Secret Quest Worth 500 Gold, which I'll link to below. Now, once in Gorgrunt, you'll enter the Iron Docks instance and run through all of it. Iron Docks is the best instance for gold farming in the whole game. You can make around 5,000 gold, raw gold, uh, per hour just running Iron Docks. That's why we weren't doing a lot of the less accessible bosses in the raids earlier. There's no point doing anything which is going to make you less than 100 gold per minute because you could just run Iron Docks continuously and achieve that. Now to complete the hour before instance lockout resets I'd suggest running the Everbloom which is quite near to the Iron Docks or alternatively, if you have all of Argus unlocked, try the Seat of the Triumvirate, because you can port to it quite quickly. This assumes you've got a reasonably fast connection, and you can deal with the three loading screens quickly. But you can port to New Dalaran, uh, then go straight to the Vindicar, and then from the Vindicar, it's just a short run to the entrance to the Seat of the Triumvirate here in Macri. Alternatively, if you don't like these options, then you could try running a garrison invasion. And the video I just mentioned, the secret quest worth 500 gold, that will explain exactly how to do that. That ties in very nicely with running the iron docks. As to set up the invasion, you have to go to that area anyway. Now, once the hour is up, we're not done, because there's a number of quite decent LFR raids we can run in the second hour that we haven't had the opportunity to do in the first hour because of the way instance lockout works. 
So return to the seat of knowledge and select the option from Law Walker Han. Tell me of Lei Shen's Pinnacle of Storms. Now you can see why I didn't include this one in the first hour's instance lockouts. It takes about a minute to get to the boss here. By the way, there's a way to continuously farm these stone lions in front of the boss here. They can be forced to respawn and killed up to eight times per instance reset using a method that probably shouldn't be mentioned publicly but you can probably figure out if you look at some of my recent videos. Now once you've killed the boss Iron Quan, don't leave the instance group just yet we're going to proceed on and kill the twin consorts. You may be tempted to carry on and kill Lei Shen after you've damned the twin consorts. I couldn't find any way to make that worthwhile at least for raw gold making purposes. Partly because of the distance to Lei Shen, but also because of his immunity mechanics. There's one last boss we're going to do in the Throne of Thunder, and that's Jinrock the Breaker. And you can access that boss by selecting the LFR option, Tell Me of the Last Stand of the Zandalari. It's worth pointing out that you could mount in this section of the raid instance, and it'll take you between 20 to 25 seconds before you can engage with Jinrock. At this stage you're completely finished with LFR legacy raids on this specific character. I would recommend however that you fly over to the actual raid entrance of the Terrace of Eternal Spring and complete the heroic version of that instance. That's separate from the LFR version you've already run. The raid entrance is very close to the Seat of Knowledge. You may also wish to run the heroic instances of Mogashan Vaults and Heart of Fear. The only issue with those two is that they're in relatively inaccessible locations within Pandaria, so you'll have to have some means of getting there and back relatively quickly. Overall, you should be shooting for around 10,000 gold per hour invested from using this route. Most players will have characters that are either faster or have higher level than my recently dinged mage, which I use specifically to avoid getting unrealistically high numbers, as I would have done if I'd used my main. Now, these are very good returns for a method of generating raw gold. Most raw gold farms yield a small fraction of this amount. You can only do this route once per lockout per character, but most players nowadays have multiple characters at 120. So for most players with work, college or school and the need to keep up with current content, we'll find that's quite enough. Of course you can make more gold per hour by farming and selling items on the auction house. But for many players the attraction of pure, raw, visceral gold outweighs the extra profits. Now, nothing in this video constitutes an exploit, it is just a creative use of game mechanics. However, whilst making this video, I did discover a glitch which will allow you to farm four heroic bosses an hour continuously with no other restrictions. That would get fixed instantly if I explained it publicly. However, it is information I'm posting on my Patreon, along with many other high-powered and exclusive gold farming techniques. I'm fortunate enough to have over 350 patrons at the moment, many of whom make significant contributions in their own right. That said, I do understand that many people are struggling at the moment financially, and if you can't afford it or you just don't want to sign up for whatever reason, I'm committed to producing the best possible content on this channel for the foreseeable future. So, there's the video. If you liked it, why not subscribe? And to be certain of getting notifications about my videos, please also consider joining my Twitter feed. Thanks for watching, this has been Archvelder.